Welcome back to my channel, Nurse Polymath. In this video, I'm going to show you how to spike and prime IV tubing. Just so you'll know, it is the same for a primary bag as well as a secondary bag. If you don't know, a primary bag is for mainly your fluid hydration. That is going to be your continuous IV fluid infusion. Your secondary IV bag could be an antibiotic or electrolyte replacement. Just know the way you spike the bags are going to be the same. By now, you should have already looked at your orders. You should have already basically told your patient what you're going to do, as well as followed your six rights of medication administration and your hand hygiene. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the video of spiking and priming an IV tubing. First, you want to gather your equipment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open all of the equipment. We're going to start with our saline bag. And you always want to check your solution to make sure that it looks clear, it's not cloudy, checking the expiration date, as well as making sure that it is the proper solution. Okay. Next, we're going to open our IV tubing. Okay. This is a 60 drop set. All right. And then we have our alcohol preps and our labels. So we're going to go ahead, put our gloves on. We already did our hand hygiene. Okay. So keep in mind that with our IV bags, there are different bags. Okay, there's another IV bag that has only one port. Okay, so that's also very important for you to keep in mind. In this instance, this bag has two. And as you can see, one is longer than the other one. Okay, the way that you want to remember to spike a IV bag that has two ports is you want to spike long and you want to stay short. That means you want to spike the long and stay away from the short, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to gently remove this covering here, okay? Then, now, I'm showing you this in a close-up, but we will eventually move on to hanging this bag, okay? But I want you to see the close-up of me spiking this bag, okay? So here we have our tubing. Okay, so you want to go ahead and you want to clamp all of your areas here. So you want to clamp here. Okay, that's one clamp. You want to close this off and you're going to scroll down one more. You want to clamp this as well. Okay, so you want to clamp all of those off because those are going to prevent excess bubbles and air. I always like to turn my IV bag upside down, okay? Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna hold your IV bag in your non-dominant hand, and you wanna hold your spike in the dominant hand. The reason why you wanna do that is because you're gonna need the strength to poke or spike through this port here. Okay, so as you could see, this is where we're going to go in the long air part. Okay, so you're going to gently take off that covering because again, this needs to stay clean, sterile, I should say, because this is going to be going into a bag that is clean or sterile, I should say. And you don't want this bag to have any microorganisms growing in this. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and move that one out the way. Okay. So you're going to gently press in. I always like to do a little twist and get a little closer. Okay. And as you're pushing down, you want to go ahead and gently push in and try not to hit the size of this because if you puncture either side of this, you will cause this bag to leak. Okay. So you want to go ahead and push that gently in 
and try to get it as close and keep it straight as possible. Push it in, okay? So that is pretty much close, okay? Sometimes people like to get it all the way and that is where you risk puncturing the sides. But if you're just so stuck on getting that close, you wanna keep this tight so it doesn't move and push it in further, okay? And there you have it, okay? So as you can see, the spike is in the long part, okay? So then what we're gonna do is when we get ready to flip this upside down, okay? Actually, I'm gonna show you here in a close up, okay? So as you can see here, there's no fluid at the top, right? But guess what's gonna happen? When we flip this upside down, okay? Now the fluid is going to go to the bottom, which is what you want, okay? Because if you spike this upside down with the air, then this is where you risk the bubbles getting in there. So you wanna flip it first, okay? And once you flip it, you wanna go ahead and start squeezing the chamber here, okay? And as you can see, some fluid is coming in, okay? And you don't wanna fill this chamber up too much because you won't be able to see. And as you can see, it's already gradually going down. So you wanna fill this about a third or maybe halfway, okay? And as you can see, it's a tiny bubble there, but we're gonna prime that out, okay? So this is just, you don't want this filled any more than that, okay? Because you won't be able to see it dripping if it's too full, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna hang this up and I'll show you the rest of the priming of the ivy tubing. Now that we have our ivy bag hanging, okay? So as you can probably see, this is where our fluid begins to come down here, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I always like to check the tubing again, okay? Just to see if the fluid in fact has slipped down. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but we're gonna go ahead and open this up, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our clamps, okay? We're gonna open up clamp one, okay? And if you keep an eye on this drip chamber, okay, you may be able to see the drips of fluid. So we're gonna open the next clamp, clamp number two, okay? As you can see, it's already starting to drip, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna slowly allow the fluid to start to drip, okay? So I'm gonna open that back up, okay? Because the reason why I like to do that is because I like to keep an eye on the fluid, okay? So as you can see, we're gonna open up the third clamp now, okay? We're gonna open up clamp number three okay but before we open up clamp number three we're going to reclamp clamp number two this is going to be your dial this is your regulator so we're going to close that back okay so now we're going to open up clamp number three so we're going to go ahead and open that up it's going to start dripping and as you can see we're going to keep an eye on the fluid as the fluid starts to Drip down slowly, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna stop that so you could continue to see how fast the fluid goes. You're the one regulating it, so you wanna be able to keep an eye on the fluid to basically see. Okay, I'm gonna clamp it off again. So we're gonna open this up so that you can kinda see the fluid, okay? You can see it as it's going down, okay? And remember, you're the one that's regulating your fluid, okay? As you can see, it's gradually coming down here, okay? And as you can see, there, there are some bubbles here, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let that out into a garbage can, okay? So 
So as we open that up, okay, and let that drip out. And you can probably hear it. So then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to turn down the dial, okay? So now what we do is we double check our line for any air bubbles. And remember, now that we've got all the air out, this part needs to stay clean. This is where you may need to use your alcohol swab in case you touch this because what you're going to be doing is you're gonna be hooking up this line to the port on the patient's IV. You also wanna make sure that you scrub the hub of the patient's IV as well for 15 seconds, making sure that it's clean. I wanna recap this, okay? There are special caps that are designed to cover this, the end of this tubing. You wanna make sure you use it. You don't wanna have this hanging all over the place and flopping all over the place because guess what? Patients have tubing such as IVs, central lines hanging outside of their body. Guess what happens? You can introduce infections to the inner body. So keep that in mind. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.